Hey Mustangs, welcome to your Tuesday edition of The Daily Update. I'm Will Doughton, let's get to the news. More than a dozen lawsuits are filed after a deadly crowd surge that took place at a Houston concert. That story tops today's Mustang Minute. The FBI is now heading up the investigation of the stage surge that left several people dead. At least 18 lawsuits have been filed by the families of the victims who were killed at a Travis Scott concert. Concert goers are calling the festival at Astroworld a disaster. Eight people were killed and dozens were severely injured as the crowd surged the stage Friday night. One of the injured, who was just nine years old, is in critical condition. Witnesses say cries for help went unnoticed and Travis Scott kept performing, leaving some attendees helpless. It's unknown if the performers or the company who hosted the concert will be charged in the incident. Financial services company Robinhood is reporting a data breach earlier this month, affecting 5 million users. Most of the stolen data only revealed email addresses and names. Approximately 310 members had their date of birth and zip codes stolen. However, Robinhood believes no sensitive information was shared and no users have experienced financial loss due to the data breach. Hackers demanded an extortion payment and Robinhood reached out to law enforcement as a response. It's unknown if they're complying with the hackers' demands. The 20-month wait to reunite and hug family is coming to an end for those who are in other countries. The United States lifted non-essential travel restrictions along the border with Mexico. The border closed to visitors and tourists on non-essential trips since March of 2020 as a measure to contain the COVID pandemic. Now, non-essential travelers fully vaccinated against COVID-19 can resume travel across the U.S.-Mexico border. The U.S. has opened travel from nearly 30 countries, as long as passengers prove they have been vaccinated. Skin Hunger. It's an unusual name, and it's the title for an exhibit performed in an unusual art form, creative computation. SMU TV's Jillian Taylor explains. Skin Hunger is a telematic installation that uses video chat to allow users to interact. The installation has five locations, three in Texas, one in Florida, and one in Arizona. The exhibit was debuted last week at the Hammond Arts Library. Here's how it works two people log on to the program from separate computers. Their video feeds overlay and the program tracks the motion of their bodies. Then, when the user's bodies overlap, the program releases noise. The project was produced by four people. Three of them are SMU professors involved in the Center for Creative Computation. The center exists to fuse computer science and engineering with the creative practices of the arts. Professor Eric Greenberg, one of Skin Hunger's creators, started the center 10 years ago. We can use computation and code to theoretically create almost anything. Um, so it's a really powerful generative medium. The exhibit was inspired by Professor Courtney Brown's research on interaction. Then, once the pandemic took hold, the piece became a way to help people connect with one another remotely. Artist Melanie Clemens came up with the name Skin Hunger while researching how petting dogs reduces cortisol levels. It refers to a condition that happens when you don't experience physical contact with others, a common effect of a nationwide lockdown. We wanted to make something that would still allow people to interact with each other and do so based on movement, which is something that can help decrease cortisol. In future versions of the project, the artists want to transform users into these worm-like creatures from the Cambrian explosion era. For SMU TV, I'm Jillian Taylor. Jillian says there is also a more preliminary version of the program publicly available online at skinhunger.org. And that's your Mustang Minute. Without this, um, I wouldn't be able to kind of have this exposure, have that ability to uh, express myself artistically. The Metals Jazz Orchestra is a group of musicians that, you know, spans the uh, kind of the whole of 
SMU. Everyone's not a music major. We have people that are, you know, architects and in, in, in business school. People that are musicians that want to become a part of the group, um, really just talk to Professor Horn. Learn more about how to join and about upcoming performances at facebook.com slash Meadows Jazz Orchestra. Hey Mustangs, I'm Will Doughton here with your five day forecast. We have sun and a high of 77 degrees on Tuesday. This weather will stick around for the first half of Wednesday, but we do have a chance of isolated storms later in the day. We'll end Wednesday with a low of 52 degrees and wake up with another day of sun this Thursday, when the high will be 69 and the low will drop all the way down to 45. Friday is looking similar to that and will have a cool high of 62 degrees and some sun for the Stangs game against UCF on Saturday. That's all I have for you. For SMU TV weather, I'm Will Doughton. I think the best part about being on SMU Cheer is getting to be on a team that's so good and getting to learn new stunts and new skills and to be surrounded by incredible people. represent my school. Um, I think that it's really important to make your school look the best it can and so I love being able to be in the spotlight and show how great SMU is. For more information visit the SMU Cheer website. Hundreds of students gathered on the SMU campus celebrating a special annual occasion. SMU TV's Macy Mullins takes us there. It's officially the season to sparkle here on the SMU campus. Diwali Festival of Lights is a shining moment for students across Dallas to showcase gorgeous traditional fashion, a cappella singing, <laughs> dancing. We have a classical South Indian performance um, and a couple of Bollywood dances, and so these dancers have been preparing for a couple of weeks now. And delicious Indian cuisine. In the Indian tradition, Diwali celebrates bringing light into the new year and the triumph of good over evil. The Indian Student Association had one main goal for kicking off the fresh season. What we did to prepare is just making everything as bright as possible. Growing up in the United States, we've always celebrated it with our family and friends and community here. So the celebration of community and like acceptance and intersectionality, and I think all of that is really special to me. Happy Diwali Mustangs, and may this glittering festival make us all shine this year. With SMU TV, I'm Macy Mullins. November just got a little sweeter thanks to Krispy Kreme. The donut chain is releasing four limited edition flavors just in time for Thanksgiving. Among the flavors is pecan pie, cranberry, orange, and Dutch apple pie. The final flavor is a donut decorated to look like a turkey called the Gobbler. The donuts come in a box with space on top to write a message of gratitude. Well, that's all we have for you Mustangs. Remember, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash SMU television and follow us on Twitter at SMU TV. If you have any story ideas, shoot us an email, smutv at smu.edu. Thanks for watching this Tuesday edition of the Daily Update. Be sure to tune in Wednesday for more news from the Hilltop, including taking a trip through the engineering department to see what they're building this semester. Until then, have a great day and pony up. 
SMU-TV and the Division of Journalism want to thank our underwriters, North Park Center in Dallas, Javier's Gourmet Mexicano on Cole Avenue, and Advance ER off West Lovers Lane. We appreciate your support of student media.